Okay, recording on OBS Studio. So welcome to the Open Source Microfactory Startup Camp. Today we're going to talk about what it takes to start an, an Amazon store. So we're talking about distribution. How do you, if you have a product like our 3D printer or something else, what does it take? What's the process? Uh, what are some of the real numbers? Like if you're actually doing Amazon where they actually can fulfill that for you versus you just shipping yourself. How does that compare? We're going to take a look at the case for kits versus finished products, and we're going to compare that to Etsy as well, and compare it to if you're just selling on our OSC website or however you do. So we have Chris here from 3D Central Virginia, and so he's been selling on Amazon for a, for a bunch of times. Some of the highlights, I mean, that was impressive to me was... Uh, so you sold like 800 of the, the headphones, but that wasn't all on Amazon, right? No, we started first on Kickstarter and then did a, um, uh, through our own, own website and eventually on Amazon. And um, you know, the uh, moving things, products uh, from these uh, our own uh, distribution um, uh, means uh, onto Amazon and definitely um, it took some doing to, to set it up and it definitely eventually cut into the margin on a per unit basis, but in the time that it saved and uh, figuring out the um, building things in, in batches and then uh, um, setting it up like that, you know, it became um, more efficient and uh, profitable in the long term to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. So let's maybe dive right into say, you know, because the first question for us is, is right now for open source ecology, is that the time to start an Amazon store? We've talked about it here and there, and it's, of course it's Amazon is, what the, is that like the biggest, one of the biggest, I think the Chinese ones are yeah. even bigger, but it's a huge distribution channel, uh, everyone's on it, we get Amazon stuff all the time with Amazon Prime where we get supplies uh, for, for what we build here, so as a great channel, uh, how do we work with it, but of course it's going to be costs, so what are they and how, how does it look, so mm. let's take a, take a look at um, well, let's start by saying, is this, so you said you started by just selling on your own website and then moved on to Amazon. Would you yeah. say that that's what we need to do for open source ecology? Uh, well, it, um, Where are selling the advantages? Own, yeah, so the, uh, the advantages of selling it on your own um, is uh, to, you know, total control and um, you don't have the uh, same uh, fees to pay. Uh, the biggest downside is if you're selling just on your own platform, um, you have to drive traffic to your own platform, and that is non-trivial. You know, also setting up your own infrastructure for your own platform that you know can be um, can be difficult. Um, so starting uh, s uh, selling on uh, a, a platform like Amazon, there's already built-in uh, traffic. Uh, um, there's already people already coming to Amazon to buy things, whereas a new website that people might not come to naturally, um, it's harder to uh, uh, to drive sales. So um, we ended up starting. Um, yeah. Selling things just on our on our on our own e-commerce website, but then um, moved into uh, selling on Etsy as well. Um, selling um, products on the, uh, the Etsy marketplace is similar with Amazon. It also has built-in traffic, a built-in community of people who are um, uh, already coming to a place, expecting to, to to possibly buy things, and then you're sort of um, able to put your products in front of. Uh, uh, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's take a let's just dive right into the numbers. So what's the startup fee for? Okay, we want to put up an Amazon store mm -hmm. online for open source ecology. What are the fees? So so say you know easiest is you know inching into that step by step. We start by fulfilling ourselves. We just get the publicity from Amazon. So what what are the costs there? Uh, it's a forty dollar a month seller account to set up. Um, and uh, beyond that, the costs are pretty um, marginal. So they, they will just depend on uh, how much pro what products you're selling. I mean, they, after that, it's basically they take fees for um, yeah on on top of uh, basically. So of forty dollars to get started, and can you quit any time and rejoin any time? Yep, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So say five hundred dollars a year. So so if we're selling more than forty dollars or fifty dollars or so per month on Amazon, we're covering our costs to be there. Uh, yes. Well, uh, yes, pr pretty much. But the, depending on what category of things that you're selling, Amazon takes different cuts for uh, mm -hmm. for different categories. So there okay. are some things that have that. Yeah. Say we're selling a kit for five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. 
or 800 bucks. Let's let's say 800 bucks since uh, that's a figure that our yeah uh, our current cost of materials right now on the printer is about 500. So let's start with 800, mm. or to make it make the math simple, a thousand bucks. What do the costs look like there? What do the fees look like? I would probably be some uh, for um, seller fulfilled. Uh, the fees are lower. Yeah. So if you're just the order comes in, you have um, you know three to five days to ship it out to the, to the person. Uh, they would take uh, something like six six percent or eight percent on something. Do like you have that, that on your back end account? Yes, yeah, so you so can see what this. Uh, do this you want to show? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so let's look at the the headphones. Would be the one in the closest category because they're it's the only, it's the only electronic that uh, that we're selling. So if we go into the inventory. Um, Inventory. Uh, inventory. You want to yeah. operate? Um, so let's take a look down at. Let's see, Control Plus. Let's, let's increase the size a little bit. So, so this is the back end. So this is Chris's store for 3D Central. Um, I'm just going to look at the products that we let's, have. Let's take a look at. So he sells a bu bunch of different 3D printed objects. Uh, the headphones. All right, so these are out of stock right now because we've got a batch on the way into Amazon. Um, these are open source hardware certified headphones so that you go to the open source hardware association directory it's actually there as open source hardware certified by the open source hardware association mm -hmm. but let's take a look at that so if the item price was 80 bucks yeah then there is a um, referral fee of, of $12 so the referral fee of $12 is um, whether it's seller fulfilled or whether it's fulfilled by Amazon uh -huh. um, so is that a percentage or is that flat it's percentage. Uh, it's based percentage. on price. Um, it's okay. So I don't. It's not. It's a. This is why they, they call this a fee preview because it is not a guaranteed fee. This mm -hmm. is just an estimate. Um, okay. It is some combination between a percentage. You know, if you increase the cost, um, then you know the, the referral fee will come up too. But if you decrease the cost at a certain point, the referral fee doesn't decrease that much. So mm -hmm. uh, as far as I can tell, the math behind that has changed a little bit over time, but you, you roughly think of it as, as a percentage and it roughly comes out to that. Mm -hmm. So that's what the $12 is. The next is the FBA rates um, of, of um, the $4.76, and that's because I'm having Amazon do the warehousing distribution uh, without having to ship them out one at a time. Um, mm -hmm. But, and then, of course, when, when you come to FBA, there are additional fees down here, too. But looking at the most simple case of just order comes in, you as a seller um, receive the order, you print out a packing slip, you print out a shipping label, and put it in the mail. And for that, uh, Amazon takes that uh, $12. So we're just starting with $80, you're ending up with $63, and that mm -hmm. goes straight to your bank? Or is uh, there any other hidden fees behind that? There are. Um, so... Uh, yeah, and the 63 is minus the FBA rates too, but if you come to, uh, I can jump up to my um, uh, business account, to the business report to see the last uh, the last payment that came through. Um, and you can see, uh, so for the that 12-day that, uh, uh, period, there's the product charges, there's the, and then the Amazon fees. Um, and then, you know, subscription fees, FBA fees, um, long-term storage fees, and the rest, and then, uh, then that you end up with how much they pay out. Uh, and on top of that, so from that, that 300 from all the sums, there's another looks like another 33 percent, another hundred dollars off of that. Um, so, so yeah. I'm looking at you've got about 300 dollars for orders. Mm -hmm. What is this monthly? Um, it's uh, every October. Two weeks, I believe. Oh, that every two weeks, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all, in addition to that, though, there's a rolling time window because they hold, withhold uh, disbursement for I think 10. 10 days or anyway some certain amount of time they wait because uh, until in, the, in case someone um, returns the item so that once you, you ship the thing then so all of this is on like a two-week window that so it's uh, you know about two weeks behind okay. uh, so yeah. let's let's take a look at this so so actually there's another Amazon fee on top of the the bi-weekly schedule so so this is not like fulfilled by Amazon or the referral fee this is another what is this Amazon fee is that those are those are the um, referral fees I think that the, the Commission that Amazon. Oh, 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 so that was already that was we show that in the fee preview. So the fee okay, preview okay. of the, the that um, twelve dollars of, of the of the headphones is what shows up there. Okay, the okay, yeah. So okay, so that's already accounted for. Yeah. Promo rebates. So you got something, I mean, uh, some promotionals. Did you actually activate the promotionals? No, or I think that they did it. Either they did it because other people can pick gift wrapping and other kinds of things that I don't have. Um, I don't 
I see, I see. Yeah. So, so this is Amazon kind of taking care of the customer. Yeah. Not really taking care of the there seller. There are other things like, uh, you know, I ship a big batch of DNA sculptures to them, and they're 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 delicate. So every once in a while, in the Amazon warehouses, they smash one up and then mm -hmm. you know destroy it and pay and you know give a rebate and that sort of thing. So. A lot of that stuff shows up in here. Um, and you end up paying bit. for it? No, they, they pay for it. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see. The subscription fee, yes, we understand that. That's $40 a month. Yeah. Wait, but that's counted every two weeks? So is it every so two we, weeks? Yeah, so every two weeks. So if we jump back a pay period... Oh, that didn't include then, it there? Then there's no... Uh, okay, okay. FBA fee. Yeah. Great. So yeah, go back to the other one. So uh, let's let's take let's be pretty specific about all these. Yeah. So what are the okay fulfilled by Amazon? Yes, we saw that already, right? So beyond yeah. um, the small rebate that we had here, the sixty six cents, that's it was pretty transparent. Uh, the, yeah, as the, long as you, I mean, it's it, you have to pay attention to, and figure it out. And but yes, yeah, it is all laid out there. Um, now, what's not shown on here too is the long-term storage fees, but that again only applies to uh, fulfilled by Amazon stuff. In addition to this, if you are, are having Amazon fulfill your orders for you, you have to pay attention to the long-term storage fees, which is a function of how many cubic feet your, the products are taking up in their packaging mm -hmm. and their, the age of the product. Because so, yeah. yeah, so here, for example, I'm noticing 297, and you end up with 200, so mm -hmm. about th from 300 to 200. On the on the headphones so. that you were selling, you had about eighty going to sixty six, which was yeah. much better. So that was a higher value item. Therefore, you got a little more profit, or uh, because then the the referral fees were similar for lower cost items. Is that because here yeah. you're going down from three hundred to two hundred? That's you're right, and that includes basically ev everything that that was uh, up for sale, um, mm -hmm. and and includes the the subscription. Fee oh right, there's the oh whole, yeah, there's uh, a subscription fee the there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the original fee preview just shows you a higher margin than what you end up getting because okay. you end up getting. So let's let's take a look at say like one of the low cost items that you're selling and what are the costs on it. So eighty dollars, that's kind of like medium range. Okay, what's the? So let's look at say the ninth. Um, Nineteen dice box. Yeah. So okay, so this is a, a dice box um, that we make. It's a nineteen dollars, but we're charging for it now. Um, we do play with our pricing. Um, uh, so then, six dollars is the fee, and includes a a uh, three dollar FBA fee. So the three uh, on the nineteen dollars, three dollars mm -hmm. is the referral mm -hmm. fee, which is what you pay because of this thing's toys and games category. That's the rate, and they change the rates quarterly. But so three out of nineteen is the is the commission or is the percentage that they take for mm -hmm. the sale, and then on top mm -hmm. of that, there's a three dollar fee as the estimate for for the FBA. Uh huh. Now three dollars out of nineteen dollars, and before that was what like four or so fulfilled by Amazon. That sounds yeah. quite reasonable. Yeah, that's not not so bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, after all of the fees down to uh, nineteen down to thirteen dollars. Um, yeah, that's you know, I I try and uh, so I found products selling trying to sell products for like fifteen dollars or less on Amazon ends up being just not not worth it because of all the, on top of this there's also the box I put it in the sticker I put on it the shipping to get it into Amazon's warehouse um, you know and some other costs to, 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 to consider um, but yeah oh I see I see so that's shipping and that's shipping yeah well they're so they're shipping it for here in this case for like three dollars yes it includes the this. warehousing and shipping but yes right which is if you were shipping yourself I mean that will be comparable or more or something like that right uh, yeah but but when you do uh, um, seller fulfilled the, um, individual the, the individual pays you shipping as well and you, you set shipping rates and then have to manage the shipping rates um, right to, to collect so, the shipping so, fees. Uh -huh. so there you save this three dollars and uh -huh. Yeah, so but basically uh, the, the difference between seller fulfilled and uh, one of the main differences between seller fulfilled and fulfilled by Amazon is that as orders come in, you ship them out one at a time to the to the individuals and um, and therefore you can build in the costs of your shipping and packaging, you know, a little bit easier, but you have more direct to manage. Mm -hmm. When you ship to Amazon, you put all of them into one box and ship that one box to Amazon and then that, so you only have one shipping fee and then they, they ship the rest and it's built in um, mm -hmm. to that. But, um, so that's, what, what's your overall assessment of Amazon and do you like it or? Um, yeah, I, I uh, overall assessment is that the, it is a really, it's a powerful marketplace to have, to have access to. It is still, it's still pretty expensive in terms of, 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 of fees relative to 
other um, platforms. So about 33% of like, we saw the yeah. 300 going down to 200. That's about standard, that's about standard. So compare that to um, a marketplace, the, basically the other main marketplace that we, uh, online marketplace that we use of Etsy is, um, Etsy has not, not, not near as high um, rates. Uh, after all of the, the different fees, I think it, it ends up being something like 5% or something, uh, eight, 5 to 8%. Um, but, uh, and they both, they have their own um, um, pros and cons to them, but, uh, but in just in terms of m my workflow and I'm managing a lot of different things going on, when an order comes in from Etsy, I have to ship, you know, it has so much variation, um, it has uh, um, what size, what color, you know, it's very specific, um, it's great to, to, to deal directly with the customer, but then... Um, Mm -hmm. There's just so much more to manage. Whereas Amazon, I can send the whole thing and then just not. Yeah. Worry about it. So for Etsy, would you suggest then like just have one kind of product, or are they really focus on custom products? Well, variability is is helpful in Etsy. Um, uh, right. It's just a different relationship with with the, with the customer. People mm -hmm. who come to Etsy are kind of expecting to kind of collaborate with the with the seller, as opposed to people who come to Amazon expect something that comes off the shelf at mm -hmm. a, you know department store and yeah. have different expectations. Let's talk about so credit card fees or however people are paying, where are those coming in? You don't pay that? You Ah, for, for other people oh, from um yeah, in like now a in person uh -huh. pay, pays $20 online yeah. using their credit card, who eats yeah. up that credit card charge? It would be Amazon, I assume. Um because the uh 20 well, I mean the $20 then would uh, come through and reflect in our account and then minus all the different fees. So I'm assuming Amazon passes it on, but, um, uh huh. Yeah. Right, right. Passes on, but, but you don't, I you're do, not paying a five or whatever percent no. hard fee on top of this. No. Right? So in terms of the, the actual disbursement, they send it out, um, via bank, uh, transfer. So mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. takes, it takes a while to actually hit the account, but there's no then fees associated with Oh, that's with good. It. That's good. So, so that's a, I guess a good advantage. The credit card fees are already yeah. covered. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at a case of a selling a, a kid here. Say we're selling s something for a thousand. So are we mm. saying here that out of a thousand sales price, we're going to be getting seven hundred? Yeah, take, um, or yeah, could be. Uh, is that realistic? Well, so or or are we really gaining for the higher ever higher price items because of the fulfill the one is the referral fee does that Correct. become proportionally lower or that's a good question and so because eighty dollars is the most expensive that I've, I've sold on Amazon you know mm -hmm. on Etsy I sell bigger ticket uh, items but on Amazon that's the that's the most expensive and that is our most expensive fee as well like we can't sort by that let's see um, Google so you um, see this a, a nine dollar product uh, ends up with a four dollar fee that ends up being fifty percent you know at the, at the low end whereas you end up when you end up with something more expensive yeah it ends up being a, a lower percentage oh yeah. so that's that's good so for higher ticket items if it should we Google real quick uh, what are the referral fees for Amazon just just to see so um, yeah by category let's uh, oh by category so where where would the three D printer go into probably. Uh, is usually fifteen percent. Okay, so yeah. about one hundred fifty dollars yeah. there. As, low, as high as forty five percent, as low as six percent for personal computers. So, so they try and make it so something that's a low margin uh, type. Um, a kit might end up with a lower, lower percentage as opposed to a, a, a fully built um, mm -hmm. machine. Let's see. Um, can we identify what category that would go in? Um, um, would it be like? Gen is it general or do they have a, like electronics or and so there's consumer electronics eight um, percent oh so that, that actually looks pretty good eight percent for consumer electronics so. yeah yeah because so they also they assume most people um, who are most people who are selling on Amazon are not connected are many steps away from the actual manufacturer they're just right a so the margins are lower so exactly. I guess there's an advantage for us being the producers absolutely absolutely okay well that that's actually promising here so. If we've got consumer electronics for the 3D printer, if that's where the 3D printer goes into, and we can check that, that's 8%. And then minimal referral fee is 30 cents. But yeah, 8% out of 1,000 is $80. Yeah. So not too Beautiful. bad. Yeah. I mean, it's under 10% referral fee. That's Yeah. And that's decent. So with uh, uh, the other caveat is, with, uh, that's right, you have to, if you're selling uh, the product elsewhere on the internet, it has to be cheapest on Amazon. Um, right, so that kind of determines your pricing <laughs> strategy there. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. And then, uh, if you were doing them as fulfilled by Amazon, they would take additional costs. And in fact, and the kits probably would not. Bulky things tend to have worse, do worse on Amazon fulfilled by Amazon because you have the long-term storage fees that enter in if you're not selling them quickly enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as it's just um, order comes in, order goes out, eight percent. That's um, probably about what you could expect. Yeah, uh, I think I have a wiki page on the wiki, actually called. Well, let's see. Let's go to. I took some notes about the storage fees because I was looking at it. Say we're producing twelve printers, just ship them over to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Are we getting killed by you know after sell selling them? We'll say within a year period. What are the storage ah. fees there? Let me see. Um, yeah. Control find Amazon. Amazon store. Oh, I got plenty, plenty. Global Amazon shopping fulfillment by Amazon. Okay, fulfillment by Amazon is probably what we want to take a look at, and I took some notes here. So ah, yes, cool. Storage fees. So yeah. a twelve by twelve by six box. So say we're shipping our kits in a twelve by twelve by six USPS box. Kit storage cost is four dollars per year for one cubic foot. It's not yes, bad. That's not bad. However, the first year is the cheapest always, and then if you're depending on what your sell through is, if you uh -huh. end up here, so let me show you something else in our in our inventory planning. So they give you, um, they try and uh, direct you in the ways that that are going to oops, that's not right. um, direct you the path, you know, into doing exactly what they want. Which is, um, they're telling me they don't want any more of these things. They want me to send them more of these things. And then here is and my. And how do they determine page. it by sales? By sales, by traffic, by what fees they collect, by whatever else they um, okay. kind of storage, you know, all all kinds of. Um, uh, of things and they're, all, they're also trying to sell you on advertising and um, and everything else. So here, here you can see my inventory age. Um, all of these things are less than uh, actually everything I have in is less than one year. Um, and mm. you can see how many of the products are uh, have different um, ages. But basically, the um, so ninety days was typical for you. That's good. Right now, I mean, because we're building things in ten, fifteen at a time batches, and so that helps with our our sell through, which is the main thing that Amazon looks at for what your quality is. And sell through means. How much of your stuff? It's like first in, first the stuff that comes in. How quickly is your inventory selling back out from when you restock it? Um, I, um, when I was looking at the long-term storage fee report that I got a while ago, the first year was something like four dollars for I, some from the big products. The next, you know, year was maybe like fourteen dollars, and the year after that was fifty-two dollars or something. So if your inventory sits there for three years or two after the first mm -hmm. year, it gets really, really expensive for them to store it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. And here, like the the learnings about storage costs are because the kit folds down into such a smaller volume, it's four dollars per year. That is completely doable. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then you look at the fully assembled printer, which would be like a two by two by two foot box, and that yeah. goes up to sixty uh, annual fees. Which, if it's fully assembled and the price is higher, that still could make d decent sense. So it's not. Yeah. I mean, off the off the cuff, it's not prohibitable. It's yeah, no, not prohibitive. It's yeah. um, it's decent. Okay, and then shipping was. I was looking at. So I did get some of these specs before. Uh, eight small kit under twenty pounds. I was getting like fifteen dollars for shipping. Mm -hmm. Not too bad if you. So you add fifteen plus five or so, twenty bucks. Say say that sat around in Amazon for for a year. You're selling the kit for a thousand bucks. Let's say or. So however, yeah. uh, definitely manageable in terms of price. Yeah. Uh, compare that to flat rate USPS, twenty dollars up to seventy pounds. Yeah, it's comparable. Uh, now full forty five pounds. Uh, that's twenty four sixty. I'm not sure what that is about. Okay, uh, full printer. Yeah. Uh, shipping. Oh, are we saying forty five pounds ship ships for twenty five bucks at the post office? I think that's yeah. more than that. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it depends on where it's where it's going. I mean, if it's it. if it's a big box, mm -hmm. I don't know where I got the figure from. I, okay, oh, but okay. So let's take a look at case example. So here, um, I was actually looking at. Oh yes, yes. You can actually come look at your. They have a spreadsheet on Amazon. You can put in your. Uh, the link is. Uh, Okay, this is this I got from Amazon. So if you actually look at fulfilled by Amazon, you're going to get the spreadsheet there that they allow you to fill in. So item price, we're talking about 800. Selling on Amazon fees are 96 bucks. 
cost of seller fulfillment 20 seller proceeds 684 cost of product 500 let's say that's the kit price kit materials are 500 net is 180 so margin is 23 percent um, yeah so that's what it looks like and then Amazon fulfillment compared side by side to your fulfillment you're getting comparable I mean pretty yeah. much you're yeah. actually getting a little bit of less but that amount of less is only like 10 15 dollars so uh, here it looked actually quite attractive uh, the selling on Amazon fees are they're the high so, so that's the hundred hundred bucks so that was about it's not eight percent uh, we were looking at consumer electronics being yeah eight percent so it's something something different but I guess this is Probably ac like more accurate or something. But also yeah. here too, I noticed you're shipping to Amazon. You're shipping. That's I guess if you're shipping them one at a time. If you're Ship able to Amazon, if you're able to ship bulk, uh, you know, get a, several of your units together and ship them all together is where you can start to save some uh, money on, 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 on shipping. Right. So because we're not including ship to Amazon fees here, like yeah, the profit. But you're shipping it straight to the customer I guess, here. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So here it actually. Well, if the cust. Ah yes, oh, yes. If if the customer is paying, yes, we're yeah, getting yeah, a few yeah, more yeah. bucks. But well, assuming that you you charge, I mean, and setting the right price for shipping and handling and packaging and everything is definitely non-trivial. You have to pay attention, um, look at the costs, and and you know, mm -hmm, keep, keep mm -hmm. tweaking it. Back. Yeah. So overall, like twenty percent or so margin. Whereas if you're doing it completely by yourself without the Amazon fulfillment, mm -hmm. uh, you get quite a bit more. Yeah. Um, so basically count on say a hundred the summary of this here is you counting about a hundred or so for the whole fulfillment process out of an eight hundred dollar product so mm -hmm. one-eighth like twelve percent mm -hmm. like that something like that okay yeah. all right and then it's these numbers would be a little different say you're doing it this is just a shipped kit the small kits would look a little different so tell me about your experience with what are the advantages of Etsy versus Amazon shortcomings and advantages of each? So it's uh, a different. Etsy is yeah. Etsy.com. Yeah. The main difference is um, the I, I see is is like um, the culture and and the relationship with 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 customers. Uh, it definitely, I found different products do better on Etsy and other products do better on Amazon. But the main difference is that. Um, people who come and to shop on Etsy, it's much more of a collaborative um, kind of process. They're, they're, um, for one thing, uh, on Etsy, Etsy drives people uh, to sellers' um, pay, whole page. So uh, on Etsy, every seller has their whole um, shop storefront. So it's basically so, Etsy. Yeah, sure. so Etsy is is um, Etsy ha uh, is a marketplace of storefronts, whereas Amazon is a marketplace of uh, Products. Of products, and they're mm -hmm. really wanting people to to, to compete uh, directly. All right, so let's look for. Uh, let's see what do we got. I'm trying to find the bar. There we are. All right. So this is one of our uh, products. Um, so um, th this is our our sort of general storefront. Um, we have different um, uh, categories that we can set things up. Um, we have uh, some of our different uh, uh, products here. People can still find our, our store via, um, for searching for individual products, like I just did with the Cryptex. But there's also um, an overall store front that people come and they're engaging directly with the seller. There's a lot uh, more transparency. You know, there's a lot more direct connection between buyer, the buyer and the seller, which is great because a lot of people who come through um, uh, through Etsy. Uh, like I said, it come with like a collaborative attitude. So we do a lot of things for cosplayers. We do things for, um, you know, this is our section here. We've been doing a lot of things for um, weddings, engagement type things. So people who, customers who come, often come with an idea um, and they're wanting to, to jump off from this. Um, the mm -hmm. expectations when they, uh, when they receive the thing is that they have expectation of a handmade good, that they have a direct connection with the human that made it. Whereas on Amazon, uh, it's very different expectations. Um, so you can even just look by looking at reviews of, uh, of products on 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 Amazon versus on on Etsy. Um, uh, people have just very different expectations. And yeah. so when they end up, um, if if uh, they have something specific in mind, or if there's some some issue with uh, any sort of delay, or the postage goes wrong, or the break it or anything, 
uh, people in Etsy are much more like, well, let's let's fix this. How can we? You know, what's um, uh, much more understanding, whereas Amazon is a little bit more mm -hmm. um, brutal. Okay, uh, do you, can you show the back end of this or uh, not really? Yeah. I don't know my password. Uh, I need to look up the login for it. Okay. Yeah. So Etsy and Amazon are big ones. Have you looked into a number of other ones, or are these really? These are, have been the main ones. Uh, other than we had our own e-commerce, we tried to sell some of our products on a website. Um, we used to do all kinds of in-person things, of so, uh, the stores or craft fairs, that those sorts of marketplaces. And uh, uh, you still have your own store on your own website? Um, no, there is. A, I mean, for the three D printers that we sell, there is still a, a, a little e commerce thing on that on our website, but we don't sell any, anything on our website um, because it's you find the platforms Etsy and Amazon better. Or? Yeah, I mean, the traffic that comes to our website uh, is very much um, lo lo local to our region, who locals who are looking for three uh, D printing services. Um, mm -hmm. So that that is the other thing that's that's great about Etsy is because we do so much. Uh, custom uh, stuff and people come with that expectation, mm -hmm. we get lots and lots of good custom requests from Etsy. So customers come in and say, oh, I see you make all these things, but what I really want is not on your Etsy, but I imagine that you can make it, so um, yeah. can I? Can you do that? So we get lots of the, our custom builds from, from Etsy, including new ideas for new products that we will then post on Etsy and you know, put put the three D files on uh, you know, Thingiverse. Oh, that's good. Thing. So a bit of collaboration from Etsy yeah. is to be expected. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my. Mm -hmm. And from what I looked at regarding Amazon. Seems like the setup process to go to Amazon is pretty transparent. It's you can get signed up right away, so it's not big barriers. Um, and I guess Amazon would make it easy for people to get signed up. Very okay. much so. Um, though, like most sellers on, on Amazon are like people not their own manufacturer. So what they're Amazon, they make it really easy because they want you to come in and oh, you sell um, uh, these paper towels. They're 200 other people also selling that same brand of paper towels and they're, that's where they want people to come in and resell whatever and compete on price like that. Mm -hmm. um, then setting up as your own manufacturer is a little bit more um, uh, complex, but um, yeah, I mean, I think getting open hardware into the marketplace, competing with proprietary product, physical products is paramount uh, yeah. because all we can, people can create all kinds of uh, enabling tools so people can solve their own problems, build their own stuff, um, and you know, hopefully that is displacing some need for commissioning new things, uh, proprietary things be built or going and buying more, more goods, um, but enabling people to not only build goods for themselves, but build goods for open source goods for that compete directly on the market with proprietary goods is, is that's good. It's necessary. That's, that's uh, in order to, to replace the proprietary economy with an open source economy. It has to be part of the part of the economy. You know, it has to actually do selling and buy, you know, um, um, the commercial. You know, in, in nature. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Let's look at the back end of Etsy because we saw the Amazon. Where our conclusion on Amazon was about thirty percent <coughs> or so for overall costs of doing business there, and that thirty percent is. It would be attractive if your cost of materials and if you're the producer is low, especially if you've got access to natural resources, <laughs> um, feedstocks that that are that are near free, such as recycled feeds. Say for 3D printing, you've got recycled feedstock. That would make Amazon quite attractive if your cost of production is very low because you're doing open source processes, recycled materials, and the profits there could be pretty good. Uh, yeah. 
Right. So uh, the Amazon fee or the Etsy fees rather work a little bit differently because um, you you have to um, you have to pay a fee even if you don't sell anything. So you pay a twenty cent listing fee, um, and that's that expires every three months. So just to have a listing up there, it's, it's not it's twenty cents. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're I guess that's, uh, if you're spamming, if you have lots of products, then then that that can add up if they're not selling at all. Um, that's Etsy. That's Etsy. And then on top of the twenty cents, there is a um, then there's a percentage fee that they take. I think it's three and a half percent. All right. So here we are in our Etsy now, and you can see. Um, so let's take a look at some of our. Let's take a look at one product and what's <clears throat> what are the costs involved. Okay. Say the ring pop box or something. Or <clears throat> okay. So um, this is the listing <coughs> for the ring pop box. Um, in, in Etsy, you c you have it's a lot it's a lot easier to have um, variations um, and customizable. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, customizable listings. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we want to look at only like the finances or the stats. So this is the the, to, to, uh, the listing um, um, primary listing details. Uh, so when an order comes in, there's there's no such thing as um, yeah, Halloween is good and nowhere, and there's always a lull before uh, uh, shopping kicks in. Um, but there's a so whenever an order comes in, there's no um, fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by Etsy. An order comes in, we see this is a um, you see where it's going. We we set our own lead time. Uh, let's see if we can't hmm, see set some your own lead fees. time as well. Okay, mm -hmm. and then so we do it product by product. Um, uh, also, they have a really nice uh, oh that's uh, so Etsy recently in the past six months moved to under pressure from the marketplace force coercing. Uh, Stores to offer free shipping for everything over thirty-five dollars. Oh wow! And so it was. We it was hard, and we kind of resisted at first, and had to shuffle around. Um, before you you set up your own your own uh, shipping uh, rates based on the product, and not only that, but you would set the calculator. So if you're shipping something, especially it's something either uh, more than twenty thirty inches in some of dimensions, or over a pound or two, if you are going across, you know that means it, shipping. Um, from where I'm in Virginia to um, New York might be eight bucks. To California might be fifty-five. Um, you know, so to, depending on where where you're shipping, uh -huh. um, it can get uh, especially uh, to the other coast. It can get really expensive for big stuff. So we had to do a lot of math to figure out what we charge for different things, so that on on average we wouldn't be losing money on shipping. But they ended up under marketplace forces. Uh, Deprioritize, and they were transparent about it. But they said you have three weeks, and we're going to deprioritize in the search listings any storefront that is not uh, offering free shipping on orders over thirty-five dollars. So oh, wow. we we went through and we changed everything to to now um, our products of uh, if it's thirty-five dollars or more, it is free shipping, um, which is e easier on the smaller things, but on larger items like this <laughs> um, uh, staff. Uh, uh, Come and look at that listing. I mean, there's a um, this is a new a product that it was basically a request that we got, and we built uh, we built it out and we uh, iterated on it, and then decided to list it because more people were asking for it. But this is something that it's like six feet long. Um, so in order to uh, the shipping got really really expensive. Um, but what, what we ended up doing was, was, was that the dowel for this is a PVC, and we ended up cutting it in half and building a little jig to screw together. That way, it fits in a smaller box and it cuts the shipping cost in half. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so that that we had sort of had to um, to figure out. I'm trying to see what is the um, where the fees come in. Uh, but yeah, they don't re report the fees here. Um, it, it's going to be in. In the actual payouts that they that they do, so um, so here you can see. So okay, here is a payment for a, a Death Star ring box, forty four dollars. Um, uh, there's twenty cents for the listing fee, and then dollar fifty seven. So that is modest. It's it's very modest as, as compared to um, uh, including that includes p 
payment processing fees for credit cards? Uh-huh. Etsy, yeah, Etsy handles directly. Um, uh, now, nowadays, Etsy handles that, that all directly. So, so let's take a look at your forty-four dollar sale yeah. price. You're getting thirty-nine. Yes. However, then um, shipping is no longer included. So, from the thirty-nine, we still have mm -hmm. to ship it. Okay. So, uh, if you go then into to this, basically, so say we, we this is uh, uh, printed out and we're ready to go. Um, based on where they are, uh, a first class, they expect it's it's. Um, we calculated it. They calculated it six forty nine, but in actuality, if we're ready to ship this, it's going to be four dollars forty nine cents to ship it. What you do is you say get shipping label. You now you go and find the specific box because um, uh, we recycle boxes, and so people in our neighborhood know to bring us their em empty Amazon boxes. So we yeah. break down all the boxes. We don't pay for any boxes anymore. The, the boxes are usually like a dollar to a dollar fifty each. So um, if you're shipping a hundred things a month. That can add up a lot. So instead, um, we we collect boxes from you know our neighbors, bring them by. Nice. Um, so we have a nice um, uh, box, you know, set up in the, in the machine room, and then so an order comes in, and okay, well this we'll go and find the right box for it. Um, we uh, padded this out just to make sure that we're not getting uh, so ten by ten by ten is we have plenty of of those boxes, but usually I can find a better box than that for something this small. You put the exact dimensions, uh, uh, you know, in, and you get uh, then a cost. Um, this person is Columbus, Ohio. It's pretty close, so that's going to be, and it's a small thing, so it's going to be pretty cheap. Uh, once you go through it, you you generate uh, it generates a shipping label that you can print out on your printer. Um, uh, so this uh, is integrated with USPS completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also yeah. UPS or just USPS? Uh, yeah, no, you can. Oh no, it is just USPS. That's right. Oh, on that's Amazon, great. you can, on Amazon you can pick which, which uh, you can pick which service. So this completely it, streamlines this. You got a home business there. You don't have to yeah. go to the post office. No. You leave it in your mailbox mm -hmm. to be shipped away. Absolutely. Uh, if it fits your... in a blue box, you can just drop it in a blue box. Um, blue. What's a blue blue box? Like the ones on the corner. Uh, oh, yeah. that takes anything the first class. It's under thirteen ounces, and it's. Smaller than a bread box, you know, can you can just drop it in any of those blue boxes. And, and if it's a larger item, you can have it picked up. Say you get, run a home business, you uh -huh. can actually get it pick, picked up from your home. Uh huh. You can uh, you can either schedule a free pickup um, with the, with the post office, and then it's just your normal post person who's on their normal route. They get a ping that says so and so has a package for you, and then when they drop it off, they'll come and knock and and look for it. Um, so what, and what we do is we just have a mail bin by the door, and then as we, we pack and ship orders every day, um, whenever the post office person comes through to drop off mail we say oh hey would you take this too and they put it in their cart uh, their uh, truck and drive on you you can also um especially if it's big or if you have a lot of things or you haven't seen the post office uh, uh post people come by in a while you can drive to the to the post office um don't have to wait in line you can just walk up to the counter and th these are all if you have the, there are already have labels on them you can just go and drop them off oh nice and that applies not only to shipping in the united states but around the world um we uh, probably 30 Twenty thirty percent of our orders are international, um, and so we're shipping these things all over the world. I mean, we've hit probably excellent. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you, different you countries. had to take care of your shipping. By I mean, so, so Etsy completely facilitates the shipping side for USPS. That's great. Uh huh. Mm hmm. What's is there a weight limit on that, or just standard for whatever the post office takes? It's whatever the post office takes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, and how do you print the labels? You have a Printer and just yep. regular printer, regular inkjet or laser uh, printer. Um, you uh, so we buy the, the shipping labels, um, uh, which has two labels on uh, on each uh, one. And um, shipping labels that are just blank or are yeah, they blank, templates? Blank shipping labels on Am on, on Amazon. I can show you. Um, wow. The the shipping labels that we buy. I think they're like thirty cents a piece. Yeah, these these just two sheets. Okay. So that's what it looks like once you print print them out. But they're oh, just great. Um, yeah. So you get two two shipping uh, uh, yeah, tw uh, two hundred count for twelve bucks. Um, yeah, and so then you just um, print it print it out on your printer at home, and it's a sticker paper, and you just oh, stick it great. right out. Um, nice. For international things, you have to fill out a little customs form and that sort of thing. But it's um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's easy. Nice. So that Etsy has is the lowest barrier to entry for for this th sort of thing. I mean, for twenty cents, you can just throw something up without having to jump through any hoops. Take a picture, write a description, set a price, and you know set some tags. And what you and you'll start getting. Um, Etsy has built in, like I said, built in traffic, so people will start coming to to uh, will find start finding it within a week or so, and you'll see traffic come, and people will say you know might send messages or. Um, that way you can just sort of throw at the wall and see what what happens. I mean, so what do you not like about Etsy? 
Uh, the idea that you have to do all the fulfillment. Yeah, and that's okay. It's just it just becomes uh, unmanageable um, depending on how, how busy things are. Um, the number of variations and things can be can be a little. Um, mm -hmm. So but, but Etsy is sort of a proving ground, testing ground for for some new products. Experiment with this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love how customers come with new ideas for t why you should do this and do it a little differently. Yeah, I that's want great. Like that. Yeah, the community aspect. Yeah, but then is we'll, there a, is there like a like a discussion thread or is it per product? It, per, per product and their direct messages that people send. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then whatever we like, whatever works, so we'll then try and port onto Amazon. Um, it's a bigger marketplace, and you can uh, build out uh, yeah and in larger inventories. Yeah. Wow. So this is essentially product testing. This is a good workflow to get yeah. into Amazon. To test the ones that work really yeah. well, and then try them. Yeah. Uh, Amazon. It's different though because like the headphones, for example, we never sold many headphones on Etsy. Um, uh, so it's just different marketplaces. And on Amazon, how many did you sell? On Amazon, that's a good question. Let's check it out. We've sold a lot more in the, in the initial Kickstarter and and on our. Um, let's look at the lifetime stats. And on our e-commerce, um, but. been out of stock for a month or so of the headphones. Alright, so we sold 10 in that time period, so let me just go far back. L84 on, on Amazon. Or right, plus 3, yeah, 87 on Amazon. Um, so here you can see the uh, yeah, total revenue there and um, mm -hmm. per page view percentage, buy box percentage. These are the different session percentage. You know what is the conversion rate? You know uh, on this, 11% of people who looked at this listing bought it, which is a pretty good conversion rate. Whereas uh, you know 4% uh, you know bought this one. That's not not nearly. Oh as wow, good. yeah, like 10% so. for people just looking. And so they yeah. were, for example, looking for that product. They went on your that was so your like listing. so whereas you, you see on on Etsy you know you look at the actual um, uh, storefront for that person uh, for that that that, that ch uh, channel on Amazon it's very much they're trying to do product by product so for this you'd have to let, let's see if it shows up I mean I mean from this there are seven thousand so. Uh, Waiting for it to show up is, um, or uh, where you are in the search listings, and I'm sure it changes, and, and uh, depends on you know, all kinds of factors. But oh, there it is. Is it important to select yes. good keywords for? Yes, good keywords, good category tags. Um, uh, so it's a little bit opaque, it. and the pictures are really important too. So um, having pictures that are, you know, they used to have extremely strict guidelines of has to take up. No, I don't, I'm not getting the details exactly right, but um, no less than 70%, no more than 80% of the screen. So the picture has to be, you know, very well front and center. It has to have a perfectly white background, pristine white background, and it has to, you know, you have to have a certain number of different types of pictures. So mm -hmm. they've relaxed that a little bit and have allowed for um, uh, people to, to upload other things, but you can, you can see if... Uh, mm -hmm, it makes mm -hmm. a big difference in terms of... Uh, how well you can well see you it. Can, yeah, 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 that's good. It's a good standard. Um, so, going back to Etsy, twenty cents to list it. Are there any monthly yeah. fees or anything? Mm -mm. Completely free. So, just twenty. If, if you just want to test something, you set up an account. Does does right. account set up to cost anything or that's no? 
Oh, that sounds that's, that's 20 cents. That's right, yeah. And then per sale, you said it ends up costing like 5 to 8 percent. Is that, uh, um, is that's that w when you were talking about shipping as well? Yeah, or? yeah. Because mm -hmm. now shipping cost is, it's of the $44 they paid, shipping has to be, is, is a factor of that. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But wow, that's okay. That's quite attractive compared to like 33% we were saying for yeah. Amazon. So, so yeah, people start with that. So you go to Amazon if you yeah. well, want well, more sales. For the $44 we have, um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well that sounds good. So that's um, that's a good introduction to this. Um, and as far as when you're looking to sell at other venues besides Amazon, Etsy, I mean there's other ones besides Etsy, but have you looked at any other online platforms that are as favorable or why is Etsy yeah. so popular? Is it nobody's competing with Etsy or? It's, um, I mean there are other, you know, handmade marketplaces. Uh, there are other marketplaces, uh, but in terms of I mean, so there are other other projects to get like uh, for people to run their own e-commerce, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, Etsy seems fairly really unique. Good. I mean, we were selling, we did sell some kits on Tindy for a while. We were selling some build kits on Tindy, we, um, and it was mm -hmm. bought by Hackaday. Um, they, uh, it was, it's a good marketplace too. We had, we had some. Um, it also was very collaborative in nature, which was nice. Um, but it just. Uh, so we were selling like the headphones build kits yeah, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Most a lot of our products didn't really seem to fit. Our printed products, you know, didn't really didn't really fit in with the with the. So it's a matter of how, what you can manage for the most time time effective way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about eBay? eBay, I've not had any any real success with. I know that there are other people do. eBay has really high fees, um, from what I want to understand, like um, more than Amazon. Um, and they also have payment processing fees, and uh, yeah, I just um, I didn't have a, a whole lot of good luck with it. But I also I didn't uh, mm -hmm. I didn't end up trying all that all that much. Are there any opportunities to sell on other countries' platforms like Taobao? <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, I imagine uh, quite possibly because, like I said, thirty percent of something of our sales on Etsy are coming from overseas, um, and for Amazon, getting your products into into in the international marketplace is very difficult. Amazon has different marketplaces in the different countries. We have oh, we, yeah. we set up the Mexican and the, uh, um, uh, Canadian marketplaces, but you have to go through and get the right import. Um, certificates mm -hmm. and you have to do all kinds of stuff that Amazon's basically like make sure you cover your ass because uh, you know uh, here's the marketplace but you have to do everything that you figured out you know yeah. what I mean and uh, uh, yeah it has been difficult even yeah. just porting our products so once we start a chapter in China we can be selling on Taobao <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah but that's yeah, good that's a good introduction so it sounds like yeah, definitely worth looking at. You'd have to look at the specifics of the price structure, go through the numbers and see what it looks like for Amazon. But for Etsy, just go right ahead and put it up there. And it doesn't cost you much outside of setting up a listing, an account. Yeah. Um, and it's Etsy is more collaborative. So. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. So it is it's more collaborative with the customer, and it's also a lot less... Um, uh, competition driven in that uh, like people are going to your channel um, mm -hmm. and even if so it's quite possible that this Death Star ring box for example there could be let's take a look it could be uh, 20 other people also selling Death Star ring boxes um, in th that example and quite possibly the same you know STLs um, yeah but uh, oh, well. yeah and that's totally totally f fine and great on Amazon, however, the difference is when you go and you search for the one thing, um, you then uh, you then have a lot of different people all competing to, for that same one listing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is something that's manufactured, uh, uh, but it's sold uh, sold from uh, one particular. Uh, uh, buyer, but depending on what it is that you find, there could be 50 different, um, there could be lots of different people all selling the same one item with the same UPC, and depending on who has the lowest price, they show up as the person who you would actually buy it from. 
So, um, now how do they get the same product code? They, so, how does that work? Because when you register a, a product on on Amazon, you have to give you have to uh, give it um, its its UPC code, or it's I mean there are a couple of different product codes, but it's a serial number that 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 says not only is this what the thing is, but this is the manufacturer that it came from. Um, this is the version that it is. This and there is the could be made. you're saying there's many many resellers that could be oh, selling that same, that same yeah. thing. That's the that's the sta uh, it's standard because most sellers on Amazon are not the manufacturers; they're just retailers, resellers. And most manufacturers don't have only one retailer reseller; they have many. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, and what's yeah. so? Can it be fair to say that the manufacturer is in a much better position than the reseller, or if they are also a reseller? Um, uh, if if they're yeah. well well no but just like say you're you know you're starting a career in open source hardware yeah and you have a choice you can sell other people's open source hardware or you can make your own mm -hmm. and you're gonna sell that on Amazon or somewhere else I mean mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. if you're the producer you're gonna make more money right yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so learn open source design and start producing and with the open source microfactory yes so. Okay, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Any, yeah. Anything else? Do we cover most things? Any other summaries or anything? Uh, no. No? Good. Yeah. good, good. Okay, well, thank you very much. So, yeah, and give us your comments. So, we, you know, here's we have some experience on Amazon, and we're looking at setting up the store for open source ecology. If you have any comments, suggestions, or insights that if you are a seller, if you can help us uh, make this video better or correct some of the content... Uh, please go ahead and su submit comments under the video. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you soon.